are minimalist shoes, aka barefoot shoes, bad for you? I say no. Thanks for watching. Just kidding. In this video, I'll be sharing with you five benefits of barefoot minimalist shoes. So stay tuned. Hey there, I'm Dr. Keith Nunez, physical therapist with Good Rehabits, helping you optimize your body so you have the freedom to enjoy life. On this channel, I share my knowledge on exercise and rehab, as well as make some gear recommendations like minimal issues. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. All right, let's get into it. A minimal shoe or a barefoot shoe are shoes that get you as close to being barefoot as possible. So some typical features of a shoe like this are a wide toe box, a zero drop heel, flexibility, as well as a thin sole. So why would anyone want a shoe like this? Well, let's take a look at the five benefits of barefoot minimalist shoes. So number one, a wide toe box. So a lot of shoes today have this narrow toe box. Um, you can see on shoes like this, uh, women's heels, women's flats. The problem with that is that it scrunches your toes together. So if you're constantly wearing shoes like that, that's probably one reason people get bunions, where their big toe goes inward uh, towards their other toes. Now with a wide toe box, it allows your toes to splay out like they're supposed to. And now whenever you roll off those toes while walking, instead of rolling off the side of your big toe, you can roll off more straight forward potentially preventing a bunion from forming or getting worse. Number two, a thin sole. So a lot of shoes today have a thick sole like this one, where it adds an extra inch or an inch and a half of foam. Now don't get me wrong, this is very comfortable and that's why I bought these shoes here. But the problem is that it blocks our sensory feedback. So when our feet can't feel the ground beneath us, our feet muscles and our ankle muscles can't work as well. To illustrate this example, try balancing in a shoe that has a thick sole like this and that's very cushiony, and then try balancing just barefoot. And you'll notice it's actually easier when you're barefoot. So to take the example further, try balancing on a pillow and that kind of mimics uh, maybe even even thicker piece of foam uh, underneath your foot. And notice how much more difficult it is compared to being barefoot. So in short, a thin sole allows your balance to be better and allows your muscles to work better. But don't worry, most minimalist shoes have enough padding on the bottom to protect your feet uh, whenever you step on rocks or twigs. So number three, flexibility. So this goes in with the thin sole. So the flexibility allows our feet to move the way they're supposed to. So with a typical shoe, there's not as much flexibility and therefore it's stiffer. So the flexibility also allows our feet to conform to the different surfaces in our environment. Um, therefore allowing our balance to be better because we can tell what we're standing on and allows our muscles to respond to the environment better. So number four is no arch support. Why is this a good thing? Regular shoes insist on arch support, um, pronation control for some people, uh, but in reality, our muscles are actually supposed to do that for us. So in a way, it's kind of overprotecting our feet and our ankles. To have an extended analogy to illustrate my point, um, imagine your ankle being in a cast. The cast provides a lot of stability, um, protects your ankle from really moving, but provides the most stability that you can. The problem is your muscles don't have to work because it is immobilized in this ultra stable position and therefore muscles atrophy and get weaker. If you've ever worn a cast before, you know what I'm talking about. So that's kind of a, um, an extended extreme example, but kind of to a lesser extent, that's kind of almost what our current shoes do today is that they provide 
this extra protection with a minimal issue you get the opportunity to use those muscles more and therefore your feet become more resilient I have one more benefit to go over but first if you're finding this video helpful give it a like and I have a question for y'all are you convinced or skeptical about barefoot minimalist shoes let me know in the comments down below and for the final benefit number five is the zero drop heel so that's where the heel is at the same level as the forefoot um, contrast that to a running shoe or most shoes today uh, where the heel is higher than the forefoot. So with a zero drop, that's how our feet are naturally. Whenever we're barefoot, there's nothing propping up our heel. So whenever you have a zero drop heel like this, there's more even pressure across your foot and uh, it allows you to use the ankle mobility that you're supposed to. So if your foot is constantly up like this, like say in running shoes or a more extreme example in heels, if you wear that all the time, your ankles never have to bend as much, it never has to dorsiflex as much. Um, so therefore, your ankles will get stiff and your calves will get stiff. I was training this one lady in PT and she would always come in in high-heeled wedges and we'd stretch those calves every day but every time she came in those calves were still tight she was still lacking that ankle mobility and I think it's because she prefers to wear those wedges all the time so that zero drop will allow you to use that ankle motion that we're normally supposed to have so all that being said if you went your whole life like me wearing shoes that are very cushiony very supportive uh, then probably your feet might be a little more weaker than they should be. So if you were to go to wearing barefoot minimalist shoes, it may take some time to build up those muscles and kind of get used to that feeling of being barefoot. Um, so of course with anything physical, you want to kind of gradually progress over time. And so that way you'll have a better time transitioning into barefoot shoes. And there you have it, five benefits of barefoot minimalist shoes. So would I say minimalist shoes are bad for you? I would say no. If you're interested in the shoes I showed in this video, I'll include some links in the description below. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, consider subscribing for more videos like this one where I talk about minimalist shoes, other fitness gear, as well as exercise and rehab. Alright, that's it for me. I'll see you in the next video.